Welcome to the Red Raider Preview Show. This is the show that discusses all the Red Raider related issues. This is the last episode of the year because the game Friday night is the last game of the season. However, Coach Ritter will let us know his take on the Coleman Bearcat game. He'll also give his thoughts on the Athens High School Golden Eagles game. Coach Ritter has a long relationship with the Athens head coach, Cody Gross. They have known each other for years, so this should be an interesting matchup. Coach Ritter has a treat up his sleeve for Brenton John. I guess he's going to give them some more personalized versions of Ritter's ruminations. And never, ever forget that today is a great day to be a Red Raider. Now on to the Red Raider preview show with John Godwin, Brent Collins, and Coach Ritter. Welcome to the Red Raider preview show with Coach John Ritter. John Ritter. Who are you? John Godwin. Brent Collins. All right, we won't talk about our platinum sponsors. That's how it all happens. Yes. You, you act like something's about to happen. No. You're looking around like something's about to happen. No. Okay. All right, so uh, the reason we can come to you and bring this show to you is all about our platinum sponsors. And it starts with Stan Evans, Evans & Harris, PC, Gold Rush Tax, Fluid Engineering, Decatur Coca-Cola Bottling, and Frank Troop showed out right tonight. Melissa and Jamie Penley, the Core Construction Group, United Community Bank, Early Services, Decatur Utilities, Guy's Pharmacy, John Pilot with Eagle Creek, Culver's, Dr. Lou Sample, and David Peake. And we are actually in the locker room. Too bad this is not scratch and sniff. So you never... No, it doesn't smell that bad. You never participated in this locker room, did you? It no, was no, good. it was not here. My locker was right there when I was... I got stuff in that locker one time. Can you believe that? Yeah, no, I can't believe it. I don't think you finished. <laughs> and then I finished in, in that locker on, on, over there. So okay, it's let's pretty get, cool, to, let's pretty get, cool to get back in the stomping grounds, but I will say it, it looks a little bit different this year. Ritter, you, you put your touch on this locker room, didn't you? Yeah. You had some help from from Arthur Ward and some other other guys that donated some money to allow you to, to do what you've done. It looks really nice. Yeah, Arthur uh, Arthur Ward and Parker Moore came through big time. You know, we were able to do the, the shoulder pad and the helmet racks, which talk about the smell, you know, it doesn't smell. Doesn't smell at all. It allows us to spray daily. So we actually spray all the shoulder pads, we spray the helmets. So, you know, not only is it knocking down on smell, it's also knocking down on staff. It's knocking down on sickness for the most part. Uh, and then, you know, we got the, the light up D and then, you know, they, they helped with, uh, the hallway and the team room as well. So if it wasn't been for those guys, they'd probably look the same as it did. It's a really, night. really cool place. It's turned out really good. You know, that's just phase one. We've got another phase that's got to be you got five, phase 10. Oh, uh, maybe about three phases. <laughs> All right, well, give us a room in Well, hey, you know what? I think we need to patent that term because even John, last or Tuesday night, the, at the uh, the large part, he, hey, he, he was on the room Oh, there you go. <laughs> but he, and he did. That, that was a great night, by the way. It was uh, very good words from you, spoken out of heart. Love always hearing the. Well, the players don't always have a lot to say. They're, but they need to learn how to public speak. But oh, yeah. you know, having their dads or whoever came to be with them to tell them what this program means to them and has meant to, meant to them is is really cool. And see somebody like. Greenville, uh, Trey Greenville's granddad, who had played football here in 1957, Ray, that was pretty neat. He had some, some good words. So uh, they, so our our Ritter's rumination today is kind of twofold, but <clears throat> we know we go into any season and you kind of put a goal into that season. And we always talk about it. It may not be all wins and losses, but if you had to, if you had to say where we are today, uh, versus where you thought your your, your goals were. Um, where where are we with that? Where it stands? And after you finish that question, I'd like to get in. Not that we're turning the page yet. We, you know, we've been talking about November fourth for a long time. How do you set those goals for the next year and uh, and try to attain them? Did we meet some of those goals this year? You know, I, that that's a tough question without being. Maybe a little bit derogatory. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. It, you know, I, I think I think program-wise, it might have been a little bit worse shape than I had hoped or anticipated coming in. Uh, 
you know, not only from a, a culture standpoint, but also a, an experience and, and talent standpoint. Uh, you know, I, the one positive, I, I think our guys have played hard. You know, I don't, I don't think we have lacked effort, but you know, sometimes when you're you're overmatched, effort isn't good enough. Uh, you know, as far as meeting goals, I mean, our goal is come here and win. You know, whether it's year one or year twenty-one, it doesn't matter. You know, I hate losing more than I like winning, and, and you know, it, it's been a tough year from a standpoint of, of wins and losses. You know, but we also understood that coming in. You know, and, and I've made a joke about this multiple times. And in the coaching world, if this was a great job, I wouldn't be here. The last guy would still be here. And I'd still be wherever, you know, at Russell or wherever, just like I'd still been at, at West Morgan when we went to Russell. Um, you know, so there's a lot to fix. You know, I think we have fixed some, some of it. I think we're on the right track. To, to fixing some of the culture deals, to fix some of the expectation deals, uh, you know. But year one is kind of it's a wash anywhere. You know, my goal is to come in and make sure that those 12, 14, you know, I think we got we're down to 12 seniors have a great experience and something wins and losses, you know, that they can talk about as they were the guys that helped lay the foundation because they did. And, and there were a number of guys by their own admission that weren't gonna play. Yeah. Did you have to come in there and talk them into coming? At least out. three, so, I remember hearing. You know, I, I, think, about that. I think that's a. That's all three of them are starters and good yeah. players. That's right. right. And so, you wish you had them yeah. back next year. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I take all these guys back. Uh, you know, this is a really good group of young men. You know, I, I've had some issues this, this season with, with kids and behavior and, you know, in the classroom, but it's not been from the seniors. You yeah. Know, and, you know, that, that's a positive that they can always hang their hat on. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, Trey Greenwell wasn't going to play. Yeah. You know, and he was one of the first people I talked to. Bryce Parker wasn't going to play. You know, and those are two starters that have played a significant role, you know, in obviously Trey's played a significant role in every phase, but when Bryce is healthy, you know, he's been a, a cog in the wheel on, on the offensive receiver. Well, and I, and I talked to Coach Kennedy uh, Saturday at the, at the baseball golf tournament. And one thing that he said about Trey in particular is you guys help bring the passion back to Trey in this game. And so that's not a win or loss situation, but man, you, you won with that with that guy and, and his family and the Greenwood family as a whole. I mean, so it, that guy has a chance to play on Saturdays. He does. He wants to. So. You know, and he's gotten some, he's gotten a lot of attention late, you know, especially when people find out he's a 30 plus ACT. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Martin Johnson's another guy that's gotten some attention late. For, uh, he told me he had a couple, couple NAI, yeah. uh, you know, up north. Uh, you know, so though that you know, here again, you know, playing at the next level is, is not for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. and that's not something that that we expect. You know, we we're going to promote our kids. We're going to give them the, an opportunity if, if they're able to. But at the end of the day, you know, they've got to have something that colleges want. Uh, you know, and those two guys do. And you know. Talking about Trey, you know, that's what we want our program built on, is guys that not only come out here and, and lay it on the line, but do it for each other. And, you know, he's a he's a poster child for that. And there's, there's you know, multiple guys. What about a quarterback? I mean, he, you know, that, that is, he was one of the guys, I didn't really know what to expect. I know, I know you come in and, you, you know, he's kind of the next guy, up. you know, he hadn't played a lot coming in, but, I tell you, he's been a pleasant surprise this year in terms of he gets at it. And man, I, you couldn't have enough good things to say about him Friday night in terms of, you know, I'll go to, I'll go to war with him any day. He, he empties his tank. You call my kids emptying the tank. He yeah, does. yeah. You know, and how much, how much did he get coached before we got here? Yeah. You know, I think he played no snaps at quarterback, actually. Right, uh, right. You know, and he's trying to take every snap for us. And, you know. Well, Zane, I, I tell you, it, it, it's uh, – it's been a pleasure watching him this year, and, and I don't want to be on the receiving end of one of his. <laughs> when he comes around, Cam, like Cam Newton down the middle, I mean, he can pack a punch. So. Yeah, he's a winner, you know, and, and he's taken, and that we've kind of molded what we do around what he does well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, that's probably one of the biggest frustrations year one is it takes so long to figure out what you can do. And, and hopefully, in most situations, you try to have a schedule that's, 
it's front loaded or back loaded so that you can figure out what's going on. And unfortunately for us, we were, we, we were front loaded. Well, and you said in the beginning of the year, if you're a, if you're a two and eight team, go be a, a four and six team. If you're a five and five team, go be a seven and three team. Um, maybe I, I don't look at our team and say it could have been zero and ten year, but I mean, if you go out and be two and eight. Is that successful? I mean, so I mean, I I think we're we're landing where we're landing, but uh, as far as getting these guys and being good guys, being part of this foundation, this, this foundation and this program going forward. I mean, uh, well, let's uh, let's talk about Coleman real quick. We got to go back and talk about that. Um, I was a little disappointed in the outcome. I know you were. You know, way. it's one of those deals that I look out on the field and I'm thinking those dudes are just not that much better than us. And you know, it was just one of those nights. It just it, it seemed like we could get up, get away from ourselves sometimes. Yeah, you know, when you when you have five turnovers, it don't matter who you play. You know, you're not going to be successful. We played the Decatur eleven U team. We're going to struggle with five turnovers. Yeah. Uh, I thought early on when when we got the turnover, when they were about to go in and score, we did a heck of a job getting out of a hole right there. Yeah. And then it just stalled out on about 35. Um, but we were going to have a turnover. You know, we oh, yeah, that's right. right. Had the first turnover, and I think we had three in six minutes in the first. <clears throat> we had three in about five plays. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not good. You know, it, but you know, on paper, you know, I think that goes back to the culture piece that that's not fixed in a year. No, you know, not. that's not fixed in one off season. That's fixed in what we're about to fix. And you, you alluded to it, November to May, you know, when I got here in February, you know, a struggling program, you can attack it two ways. You can come in and you can be, you know, drill sergeant and you're going to have about 50 and there's going to be 40 that don't play that might could have or out of those 40. 20 of them might could have helped you, right. you know, because you're going to run them off. But what, what I try to do is I try to go in and establish relationships so that now, moving, you know, at practice when I get upset and I start raising cane, those kids know what, that that's coming from, you know, not only wanting them to do, do their it best, goes, you, it comes out of love. Yeah. You know, in November to May when we are, you know, in their rear end from the time we start to the time we finish for five days a week, you know, they understand the why, you know, and that's what stinks for seniors is they don't, they don't get to come back. And, they don't, you know. One, they didn't get to have that off season with you. That's right. You they know. got to have a spring, but man, y'all were drinking from a fire hose. Now, I remember the first day of spring practice. It was a great practice, the best practice I've seen in a long time, but you don't know the kids. That's right. Had no idea. 98 kids are trying to get to get to know seven new coaches. And keep in mind, in spring, you know, I had my defense coordinator two out of – or three out of nine days. You know, we had Kurt for the most part, but we had coaches that wouldn't even hear full-time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I hate that for them. But, you know, moving forward, you know, the games, the Coleman games, the Hartsville games, you know, those are going to be exciting games here. And that's what, that's what I'm excited about, even at two and – Two and seven right now. You know, there's there's still a a lot to be excited about when we're talking about the Cat football. Well, let's talk about Athens. Yeah, so Athens six and two overall, three and two in the region. Looks like they're in line for the number three spot, which would put them traveling uh, for a first round game. They uh, have losses to Muscle Shoals and Hartsville. They they beat every other opponent. Cody Gross, obviously from UNA. Uh, I, I think you usually you were assistant under Cody, right? I was, and then my dad coached Cody in high school. Okay, so before he went to be a star at UNA, yeah. 1991. He's a Lauderdale County guy. I didn't know that. So, so I mean, I've seen him coach of the year. I, I believe his son is the quarterback. He right? is. What's your youngest son? He's a senior. He's, he's a, a senior. He's a really good player. You know, he's been playing. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad he's a senior. That sounds familiar. Yeah. You, you played since you were playing. How, so, how close were y'all in ages? I say, when we went to Lauderdale County, that was my dad's first year. Cody was a senior and I was in first grade. So, so it was 18. Were you his ball boy? Yeah, I was the ball boy. Okay. You know, then we followed Cody's career uh, at UNA. I mean, I grew up a UNA fan because of Cody. And, you know, Kenyatta Jones and uh, Tyrone Rush and uh, Satterfield and the names go on and on. You know, Ronald McKinnon. You know, but it was all because of Cody. You know, we were, we were fortunate enough, 
dad, dad and Cody had an outstanding relationship, and you know Cody talks about dad quite often. Uh, and so we we were on the sideline at all three national championship games. Oh, so that's cool. you know I kind of grew up a, a UNA fan, not not Alabama or Auburn. So with, with Cody, when you line up against him, is this a it's the first time head to head? That's the third time we played the last two years. Okay, okay. When you're Russell, and I got us both times. Oh. <laughs> well, I had a good record against him. <laughs> so he, he's nine years into a 13 year coaching career. Um, eight and three last year. Uh, the record against Athens is 81 and 62. So it's a long standing rival. I know when I played, we played in the first game of the year, and uh, it was always uh, always a great game. Great rivalry, and uh, and uh, I remember that's one of my memories as a player when we had a uh, we were about 26 26 with a a minute to go in the fourth quarter, they put Michael Bridgeport, I don't know if you remember that name, but yeah. his legs were about this big, but he came around, he scored at the very end. They, they had lined up with their PAT to go up 27.6, win the game, and I was, I looked at a guy, not the center, the guy on the right guard, and I'm about to bow over him, and we, we were, I had one of my guys hit the guy, and I went for a foul. No, and I, I blocked the kick. Oh, okay. We go in overtime, we win the game. So awesome. it's a pretty cool memory. So maybe there's some memories like that that's been happening Friday night. Yeah, it's been a good time to bust them out. <laughs> so, um, all right, so offense, defense, y'all had a week of practice. The seniors know this is their last time to strap it up. Um, we talked through that a little bit at the barge party. Um, where, where's our mindset right now? You know, it, it ought to be going out and, and enjoying your last four quarters of football. Mm -hmm. You know, just for a lot of these guys, probably all of them, but one or two, they're never going to play again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and what I've tried to convey to them is there's this time in your life, there's nothing that will replace it. You know, I was fortunate enough to play at UNA for, for two years, and, you know, it's a business. You know, it's really a business now with NIL and all that stuff. You know, there's nothing like high school football. And you know, I played basketball, I played uh, baseball in high school, and the camaraderie that you form in football is different. It's, yeah. And for whatever reason, it just is. And so it's hard. It is. You know, and it's something you do hard together. And uh, you know, we we just talked about going out, and making sure that they're making memories that they'll they'll talk about 15, 20, 25 years from now. All right, we need to do our. But before we do that, then we need to say the time is fine. Yes. JW McCool Home Inspection Services, BCA General Contracting, B&B Roofing, Products and Services, Inc., Cater Morgan Hospital, Impact Sales and Service, Stovall Marks Insurance, PM, I guess it's Point Ballard Nutrition, yeah. and J&M Science. Go ahead. Well, we about to see you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did some senior spotlights over the year. I don't think we were able to get everybody. For some reason, they, they didn't show up, but they didn't listen. They didn't listen. But uh, uh, you, you were able to convey on a different level, you and I, that these guys persevered through a, through a tough time, through three coaches, not a great, you know, as far as winning, not a, not a great time in the, in the history of in the tradition of the program. Um, your last opportunity to really tell that to our fan base, what these guys have been. Um, any, anything you want to, uh, I know we talked individually about a couple of them. Um, anything you want to part with them for them in their next phase of life? Yeah, well, you know, we talked on Tuesday. Those guys are, they're winners, you know, because we didn't have 14 in seventh grade. You know, there was more than, there was probably 40 of them. There was probably 40 of them in eighth grade. There was probably 40 of them in, as freshmen. And then, you know, only only 14 of them had the guts to finish it out. And, you know, three coaches in three years, that's hard. They stuck it out. You know, a new system, uh, a third coach, you know, pushing them every day, probably pushing them harder and farther than they wanted to go. Uh, they stuck it out, you know, and, and we started with more than 14 to start the season and, you know, they're the only, they're the ones that, that had guts enough to finish. And, you know, we talked about they're going to be winners, you know, because life, life sucks. Life's hard. 
you know, there's going to be times in your life where as a, as a dad you're struggling, as a husband you're struggling, as an employee you're struggling. And they can fall back on this situation, these, this the eight-month period that we've been together, and they can, you know, pull life lessons from it. It's going to make them successful. And, uh, you know, there's no, no doubt in my mind that those 14 guys, though Matthew Sutton, he's our film guy, he's our 15th guy. Uh, you know, those guys are going to be successful because of this experience. And that's what football is supposed yeah. to teach you. Well, that, that's something I'm talking to Coach Blackman on the way in here. I said, hey, hey guys, what did you think about the Barnes party? He said, you know, it was my closest experience to think of like a fraternity. You know, and those guys have arrived in that fraternity because they persevered and graduated, or they will graduate after after their senior season, and they will forever be able to call themselves a Red Raider. Well, I've been I've been in some great places. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be an assistant at Athens with Coach Creasy, uh, assistant at Muscle Shoals, with Coach Bays, and head coach at Red Bay, assistant coach at Deschler, uh, You know, for a year with Coach Limble. Uh, you know, and then of course at West Morgan and Russell, and that's the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. Yeah. You know, people people want to talk about tradition. They want to talk about how their tradition is is better than somebody else's or more prestige. But you know, in eight, 17 years of coaching, that's the first time I've ever been associated with anything like that. And, and you talking about cool? That that's neat. You know, and to see. You know, all the way, Mr. Greenwell, all the way back to uh, Larry Sturgis, who's been involved with this thing for a long time. I'm just glad Larry was there because Ryan, right, because I would have been on. <laughs> you know, but what a cool event for for those kids, but also us as adults. Yeah. What about uh, and seeing the different generations? Like we had the, our young guy back uh, that played the Birmingham Southern, Smith Coon. Smith Coon was there and. I mean, I remember doing the sideline reporting when he was there, man. You talk about somebody to give, give it up for his team. He was sitting over there throwing up, maybe dehydrated after he ran a kickback. He emptied that tank, and it's good to see a kid like that move back to Decatur. Well, get you know, involved I, I know we're talking like it's, it's over with, but we're going to win this game. Yeah. Let's go there and win this game. Before we end, you know, no, y'all been on me for 10 weeks. <laughs> been on you? Yes. All this rid of rumination. <laughs> so I, I've got something. What to, are we going to do without you now? I've got something for, for y'all. Oh, this is man. The last rid of rumination. You go ahead and open it up. Uh oh. Show, uh, show them what you got. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Free time on this. Oh, show. Tim. Did you do that? So that, that's for you guys. You think I can get my wife to wear those? <laughs> oh, that, hold on now. You got. I don't, you can't have a one with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Man, that's all right. Hey, sure enough, it has been a great first season. I, mean, I look forward to what our broadcast can help bring to the. To the, to the tradition. I know John, what, next year be your 28 year? Uh, it's too big. What, does that make you, what does that make you feel? Oh, very wise. Very wise. Very very wise. wise. Yes, he is wise. wise. All right, so we're going to rename the press box at some point. John got the no, press box. Nice. Uh, Maybe he can design and build it. us a new one. Well, I'll build it. He can design it. No, I'll design it. There we go. Is that, what's that, phase two or phase three? I don't know. That may be going down the line. <laughs> Ending on path forward with the guys who's coming back, the November four. Do you give the kids or their coaches give give them individual goals as far as strength goals? Um, yeah, so we've got a you know, and I really kind of stole it from bigger, faster, stronger. We we've, we've got a, a thing that we'll display that's basically you know for your body weight. This is. This is all state, this is all, or really all area, all state, all okay. region, all America. And so those are goals that, that if you hit them, you know, technically, you know, like 225 power play, that's a big deal for us. Yeah. That's a that's an all state. That's a mile yeah. song. Yep. Okay. You know, when you're in the players club, we we'll give you a t-shirt. Okay. You know, there's a lot that comes along with that. So there's there's a lot of goals associated with body weight and, and total weight. Okay. 
No, I'm fired up. I'm ready. You know, and I hate and that, that selfish of me to say, you know, I, I'm not ready for it to be over because I enjoy what I do. I really love what I do. But I also, I love the off season. I love November. You know, we need to push it to the end of November so that we're starting in December. Right. Uh, but, you know, I love December through through May. That's, that's when I feel like I make my money. Alright. Hey, it's always a great time to travel up north and that's a good rivalry and it's a good good game to end with at Athens. Let's go up there. I like your optimism, John. Well, thank you for watching the Red River Preview Show all day, all season long. What, Jim? It is it's a, a great, great day, day to be a Red River.